Um, particularly in terms of equity, there are many students who want to study, they want to invest in their lives, um, but uh, I feel um, uh, in the sector that we, um, all the metrics are essentially saying, you know, we have limits. And um, I think from a society perspective, that's very disappointing. And I think from, a, from an investment, because at the end of the day, these guys will be in my position in 20, you know, 15 years. Um, we have to invest in them and be very serious about it. That's all. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you for emphasising um, the sustainability side of that um, and um, also uh, touching on, um, in reference to um, being online, that powerful sense of community that that creates quite virtually and therefore an ability to massively expand um, your market or, or, or your, your hinterland. Uh, it's a point I'll certainly come back to. Um, and um, certainly the one about tertiary is tremendously important. I remember how shocked I was in the budget lockup in May uh, when, you, when it, I sort of realised that um, in real terms the spending on tertiary was being cut because um, various allowances, were, um, various um, escalators were being taken out. Um, I'm only going to, um, I'm going to chip in my two cents worth um, and I'm only just going to show um, one slide um, which is that one and um, um, I um, will just make two points about it. W what that slide is was an attempt a few years ago to um, just show schematically um, how big the challenge was. This was before we were articulating it about um, Australia in 2025. Um, on the left-hand side was the economy a few years ago. The dark blue bit was the domestic, uh, was the export economy, and the dark and the light blue bit was the domestic economy. Um, in trying to look out about sort of 15 years or so to the right-hand side, um, and, and imagining how um, strongly the economy had to grow, um, it was clear that you can't get that sort of growth just through the domestic side of the economy. A lot of that depends on. Um, population growth, for example. Um, and therefore, it's the, um, our external engagement uh, which is going to um, uh, be the key determinant in whether uh, we do manage to um, significantly improve our economic performance. Um, roughly speaking, if we take that 2025 goal, um, and I would point out it's a, mo a moving target because Australia plans to be in the top five of the OECD by 2025, um, and, but anyway, we'll gloss over that for now. Um, um, essentially, um, our um, um, foreign exchange earning sectors of the economy uh, would need to double in value in real terms over the next 15 years. And it's a question I put to um, every business, every sector I'm around uh, it, as I travel around the country, which is how would you do that? So, for example, in the dairy industry, I love sort of saying to Fonterra and the dairy farmers, how are you going to double in real terms the value of what you contribute? Because at the moment, your strategy involves only um, in incremental um, productivity improvement defined by greater efficiency, rather than much of a strategy at all about trying to increase the value component of what they're doing. And that goes right back to um, Rick's uh, graph, which shows how hard we work, because we are tremendously efficient but at making low-value things. Um, and so our dairy industry is tremendously efficient, but it makes low-value stuff. And so pretty much the dairy industry's only concept of that um, is to milk more cows. Well, there's not much more room for many more cows. Um, and then similarly in the tourism industry, at the moment we import about two, um, uh, temporarily import about 2.4 uh, million tourists a year, give them a good time and send them home. Um, but increasingly, we've seen um, a withering of our markets from our traditional long-term stay wealthy markets, North America, Europe, Northeast Asia, and we've made up for it with a lot of cheap Australians. And I, I'm not saying being unkind about Australians, it's just that they don't spend very much, um, and they don't stand, stay very long, and they often stand, stay with friends and family. Um, and one of the things that kind of haunts me about the tourism sector is that an international tourist in Australia per day spends twice as much as in New Zealand. So even if we only got the spend of the existing tourists up to what they spend in Australia, 
um, then we would make an, a, a very big leap forward. Um, and so that's how I've kind of tried to um, focus some of these issues um, in my own work, and um, particularly as I, I'm a, around the country, um, uh, working with all sort, sorts of companies and, um, and sectors. And I don't underestimate for a second about how difficult all of that is. Um, but I also constantly see incredibly exciting examples of how that stuff can work. And, and I suppose for me it's just a question of trying to um, build on that learning, spread that learning, um, so many more people are doing it. Um, so that's all I'll say, but I'm very keen. I'm going to turn to Peter first. What, Peter, uh, what, what's been, what's been uh, catching your eyes? You've been going through. Um, Hi. Okay. Um, really in response to, to David Cagle, um, the, the, there's a question, is it realistic for us to expect radical action, bold action, given the lack of sense of crisis? We've seen everybody else having a crisis. We had a big crisis in 1984, and, and a lot was done then. Um, we don't seem to feel a sense of crisis now. Will anything major get done? Well, as I said, I, I think in many ways that's the nature of the challenge, or sure, it's one of the mm. key challenges along the way uh, to trying to boost our standard of living. I, I like the fact that this is a democracy. I. I um, don't think that there's a magic solution somewhere here which involves allowing somebody to force us to do things we don't want to do. I wouldn't want to live in a society where that was a realistic possibility. So in the end, we have to motivate ourselves. And I think we face a choice. I mean, I, I think... I think the way forward involves, first of all, being realistic about where we are and, and what a goal like this would involve. And I, I agree with Rick that actually we need some darn good analysis and then we need some powerful exposition. Uh, and then we need to think about it and have a debate. Uh, I'm not a pessimist because I can't see the point of that. You know, if, if we get to the point tonight of saying, no, 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 this is really too hard, let's not bother, then that would be a shame, but I'll probably pass and do my best anyway, you know, uh, because I think not bothering would be just a tragic mistake. Um, I just don't think it'll be easy. Uh, we can't manufacture a crisis, so instead we have to engage in a debate which hopefully uh, will lead to the conviction that we need to take a different direction. I, I, perhaps one more thing. Having said that I think we'll end up with some kind of debate and we probably need it, I don't think we need unanimity. I mean, there's an awful lot that can happen on the basis of the actions of quite a small group of people. I mean, let, Rod mentioned Fonterra. You know, if Fonterra change its capital structure, if, but if they do, then that could significantly transform the prospects of a significant actor in the country. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there are things that small groups of people can do that will make potentially a significant difference. Not everything depends on Wellington, although quite a lot does. 